Hey, what's up guys? Kevin here with Fandroid.com and we are taking a look at the newly released Nexus player running Android TV. We're going to jump into the Android TV software in a minute. I think that's the more important aspect of this, how it works, but we're just going to take a quick look at the, the hardware before we do that. Out of the box, you get two things. You get the actual Nexus player device. It's this hockey puck looking thing. Everyone has kind of referred to it as a as a, a hockey puck, it's actually bigger than a hockey puck, a little bit flatter maybe, um, but definitely wider. Um, so it's not that small, but it's pretty small and definitely puck shaped. Uh, you also get the remote here, which is the um, very basic Nexus player remote. Um, and it comes with two AAA batteries that it runs off of. It connects via Bluetooth um, to the Nexus player. So let's look at the actual Nexus player. Inside it's got a 1.8 gigahertz Atom processor, Intel quad core. Um, it's got so, uh, um, pretty good graphic support along with that, but what it, what it lacks is it only has one gigabyte of RAM. So um, you think the Amazon Fire TV, I think, has two gigabytes. There's some uh, other players that might have a little bit more, but definitely serviceable power in terms of graphic and, graphics and processing power. And as we'll see in a second, it does do a pretty good job with games and, and content. And there's really no hiccups on the software side because of the power. Uh, the only other thing to really know about this is on the bottom side we have our ports there is the power jack input uh, micro usb port and an hdmi in no hdmi out so it's not a pass-through device it doesn't have any audio out no digital audio out so you can't really connect it to your home entertainment system um, and this micro usb port is used for developers to debug software so you can't really expand the storage um, there's only eight gigabytes inside, so that's not a micro USB that can expand your storage. There's no micro SD. Um, you can't even really use this port to sideload apps um, right out of the box. So uh, it's pretty limited in terms of connectivity. No Ethernet port, so it's all Wi-Fi. It does have Bluetooth. That's actually how it connects to the remote. There's a button here. This is the Bluetooth pairing button. You can use that to pair to the remote or the optional gamepad. So that's that. Then we have the actual remote. Very simple. Uh, it's got a click wheel here, which is actually just a regular old D-pad. It's not capacitive or anything, so you can't do uh, like running your finger over to scroll through menus. You actually have to navigate through the menus pretty much up, down, left, right, even though it is a circle. Select button in the middle there. Uh, and then we have our Android back and home buttons and a play pause button. And the coolest feature, I think, which is the voice input button. You just hit this microphone button right there, uh, and it will trigger the Nexus player to wait for your voice command and you can speak whatever voice commands again we'll look at that in the software side of things so that's what you get out of the box again very basic very simple um well you also get the power charger too so there is one more thing but aside from that um this is what's out of the box it takes about three minutes to set up on your tv not including the software side of things um Works really well. There's not much to say about the build quality of this. It's actually nice that it's Bluetooth. You can kind of just tuck this away, hide it. It doesn't have to be out in plain sight because there's no IR blasters linking them together. The remote does feel a bit cheap, very lightweight. The plastic's a little bit cheap feeling, but the buttons are pretty responsive and clicky, so um, it's it's pretty good overall. Um, we actually kind of prefer using the, the gamepad for navigating the menus. Um, but you'll see that in our full review. So that's uh, a look at the hardware out of the box. Now let's jump over and take a look at the software side of things, the Android TV uh, platform running on Nexus Player. All right, so right now we're looking at the basic interface for the Nexus Player. This is the Android TV interface. As you can see, it's a simplified television experience over what we had with Google TV. Um, it's basically all based off of this main menu that we're looking at. Um, we can see our recently watched and recommended content up top here. That'll include things from Google Play, YouTube, other sources. Uh, if we scroll down, we have our apps. So these are the apps that come pre-installed. Uh, and we'll jump into Google Play and, and look at that in a bit. But then here, you have your games too. These are some of the games that uh, we've downloaded onto the Nexus player. So yeah, if we jump right into the Google Play store, we can kind of take a look at what's immediately available for download. Um, the interesting thing here is while this kind of looks like a featured content sort of landing page, this is actually the extent of the apps that are available. So if it looks like there's not a lot here, there really isn't too much here. You'll see there's some good streaming options. Um, you have Plex for uh, local content streaming. You can get PBS Kids, MLB TV, NBA. Uh, some things that are notably absent, however, are HBO Go, there's no watch ESPN, 
Um, there's no Amazon streaming content. So we are missing some of the bigger streaming services. Those can be addressed with Google Cast uh, in some cases with the Chromecast-like functionality, but they are limited. They're, we're missing some of the bigger music apps like Spotify, but again, you have uh, some to choose from like Pandora, which is a pretty popular. Um, the nice thing is they have the games divided up by remote games, games for the gamepad, so you can kind of see all these. Again, not a ton of games out the gate. Uh, we are pretty pleased with the games they have. Actually, if we go back to the main menu, we can jump in here to some of these games that utilize the remote um, without the gamepad and just kind of check out some of the gaming experience. So this is loading, this is going to be Skyforce, uh, an updated version of a classic game from, uh, this is like the 10th year anniversary, so uh, this, this is a pretty good example of some of the more Mission simplified begins. gameplay. And you can see you can just use the, uh, the controls on the remote to do this. All right, so anyway, that's a look at uh, playing a little bit of how gaming works out on here. Um, and all the menus pretty much are very similar um, to that Google Play menu if we jump into the Google Play library or music. We also have voice search on here, which is really cool. We can ask a question like, just tap the button, how old is Barack Obama? Let's try that again. How old is Barack Obama? He is 53 years old. So you see it's not doing the best job of picking up the actual uh, voice search terms I'm using. Um, so sometimes it has some issues with the microphone, but it can return results like uh, this uh, informational results on age, information on actors, but the results are mostly limited to um, the, the integrated services like uh, play or show movies. Let's try this again. Show movies with Tom Cruise. There you go. We see uh, we can go right by actor, pick up all these movies with Tom Cruise. We could also jump directly into our play music. Play Neil Young. And this will jump us right into play music. Uh, and sometimes it's kind of wonky. Sometimes it'll actually start playing the music, but here uh, it's not playing immediately. Uh, so that's a basic look around the interface. Uh, we can jump into the settings and see some other things, such as Google Cast, uh, which allows you to cast from your phone um, directly to your television. We can see some of these other settings on here, but uh, nothing too crazy going on. Otherwise, very simple, very easy to get into. Once you jumped in and start playing, you're kind of right in there. Installation is a breeze. It takes less than three minutes to get the box set up. Then you just have to download some software updates uh, and you're right into the action. And obviously you can see how easy it is to jump right into your content that you already have downloaded or to find and download new content um, through some of these other services. So that's a quick look at the interface for Nexus Player. This is Android TV, remember? So Android TV is gonna be on other devices. It's gonna have a same, similar experience with this Android 5.0 Lollipop base. So um, this is basically what you get when uh, you jump right in. Again, kind of limited in terms of app selection and also content selection from certain services that aren't included. But what is here is created in a way that works really nice for the TV format. The games play great. Uh, watching movies, jumping into a movie, streaming a movie works really well. The Google Cast options work super well. Uh, voice search is also serviceable, pretty good at um, navigating uh, uh, using the remote without having to type in your search terms because that can be kind of difficult. So we're impressed. There's still some room for improvement, but um, out of the box, it's a good start, but we're hoping Google puts a little more work into getting, again, those services and um, the content kind of built up for this ecosystem. Uh, but that is a quick look at the software and a review of the Nexus player. Please check out Fandroid.com for our full review, um, and thanks for watching.